One of my very favorite things about the Micro Four Thirds system is how easy it is to adapt really weird lenses. Now I've done a video on the Pentax 110 lenses and camera before. It's a purchase I made a few years ago, but I just wanted to do an updated video to tell you that I still use them and maybe to introduce them to a new audience as well because they are super cute, super affordable and a heck of a lot of fun to play with. I bought the Pentax 110 and all three lenses for the princely sum of I think £38 back in the day. Now they have got a little bit of a cult following since and you may have to pay a little bit more but I still think they're very very affordable and very fun to play with. The reason they're so good for the Micro Four Thirds system is the size of the 110 isn't a world apart from the Micro Four Thirds sensor so you can just double the focal length basically as you would a normal Micro Four Thirds lens. You can even adapt these tiny lenses to APS-C sensors I've been told without too much vignetting. Now the one con of these lenses, they are all fixed at f2.8 aperture. So if you want to use them for video or in brighter conditions like this, you are going to want to adapt some ND filters, which I've done for the test shots in this video. I'll show you how to do that later. And if you have smaller sized ND filters, you'll be able to adapt sort of the equipment you already have, which is always a handy thing. The f2.8 with no aperture blades means that the bokeh is always perfectly round and very pleasing and you do get that sort of vintage soft at the edges feel with these lenses which you know it's a bit marmite you might love it you might hate it but I think it's a very pleasing effect. So let's talk about the lenses. The first one is the 24mm which is the smallest of the bunch and it's about 50mm equivalent in full frame terms. In my previous review this was my favourite. I love it very much but I think I've fallen in love with another one this time around. I find the 24mm very nice to use, I think the focal length is good and I think it's great for a street photography or walkabout lens because the lens is so small you can change focus very very quickly or even just leave them in infinity focus and most of what you shoot will be in focus and you're ready to go. Also it looks ridiculous on the GH6. Speaking of these lenses, all of them are quite predictably soft, which is fine and understandable. Obviously, we can't expect the world. So you're going to want to set your focus peaking in your camera to its lowest, most sensitive setting so that you can use that feature to help you get focus. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it's lots of punching in with your magnification and using your focus peaking as much as possible to get focus with all of these lenses. Next is the 18mm, which is 35-ish in full frame terms, and it's the second largest of the lenses, but they're all tiny, and it is my favourite this time around. I just find the focal length great for walkabout photography, and I'll often put it on my little G100, and we'll just go out for a walk and I'll see what I can get. It's quick to use, it's fun, and these test images I thought turned out brilliantly. Now, I'm just shooting in natural profile, and I did have an ND filter on, but there was no circular polarizing element to the ND filter. So I can only assume that these beautiful, warm, lovely tones in these images are coming from the lens itself. What a treat. This is why this lens has jumped to the top spot for my new favorite actually, because I think it's gorgeous and gives you a beautiful tone to your images and video. For video, with all of these lenses, you're not going to be doing much paid work with them unless it's a very styled sort of shoot. But for fun, I think the character is really cool. And if you do buy the set, you've got essentially, you know, a full set of focal ranges for you to use. And you could match your video using these different lenses and create something really interesting. I love the character and I think they could give you some great results if you like something a little bit more soft and offbeat. Another plus point for the 18mm is the minimal focus distance is quite close, so you can use it to isolate your subjects quite well. The 50mm and the 24 it's much further away, so you really are looking at subjects to be a little bit further away. I mean, it's not massively far away, it's like a metre or something, but if you want something that you can do close shots and your everyday shots walking around, the 18mm is my fave. Now, the 50mm lens is still very tiny by most standards, but it looks almost normal compared to the other guys, particularly on smaller camera bodies like this. It's a beautiful lens and with the longer focal length I think the softer edges work even better because it'll isolate your subject even more. It's probably the one I use least because like the 100mm full frame equivalent isn't generally a focal length I gravitate towards for everyday stuff. But if you consider them as a set, you have your bases covered and it's well worth getting. Because it's a little bit bigger as well, it's easier to adapt your NDs to, which is what I'll go through now. 
I'll put on screen the filter sizes and then simply what you need to do is get step up rings to your filter size. This on some of them for me was just one ring and on occasion the smaller ones I needed two rings to get there but they're only a couple of quid on eBay and it's dead easy to do and it makes the quality that you can get out of these lenses so much better because you're not ramping up your shutter speed. The other thing you're going to need obviously is your passive adapter and once you've got that that'll attach to all of your Pentax lenses. It's very simple to set up you don't need a focal reducer or anything fancy because it's designed for this sensor size essentially so it's very very easy to adapt and it's no frills but it gets the job done. So I would say if you have a micro four thirds camera and a couple of spare quid and want something that's fun to play with go and buy some. You've got nothing to lose it's affordable they're really good fun they give you a few funny looks <laughs> because they look a bit silly they give you a very distinct vibe you know it's not crisp it's not clinical but it's fun it's character it's got lots of soft edges and and you know if you like that sort of stuff for your photography or videography definitely give these lenses a go I was using the Gobi ND filters throughout this test footage and I think they are absolutely stellar quality for the price and perfect for micro four thirds. So watch my review on those next.